The past couple months, my family has enjoyed my two youngest girls playing soccer. And it's been fun being a soccer dad. And one of the things that I enjoyed was being able to drive my girls to some of their games. And what I like to do is to play some music on the way there to get them kind of pumped up for the game. And so we'll pick various songs, and this one day I decided to go back into the archives of the 70s, and we were jamming to a song, and, and the best part was that we were getting ready to pull into the drive to the sports park, and I saw the other team was already there stretching out right by the driveway. So what would any good parent do but to put the windows down and to start blasting the song and then myself singing as loud as I could. This, this really happened. This really happened. And so here we were driving in. The other team is looking at the van as we come in and I start singing. I mean, perfect timing, the chorus. I start singing, sweet Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. Some of you are with me. Yeah, it was perfect. The timing, the bum, bum, bums. And I've never seen my girls shrink down in their seats so quick. They were gone. They were gone. And it didn't surprise me that they weren't super excited for me to drive them to the next game, for sure. But that was one of those moments in parenting that I was like, score. That was good, you know. But the reality is, is parenting is hard. And there's more times that we don't have stellar moments, right? There's more times that it's actually the parents learning and growing in parenting than it is the kids actually learning and growing. So today we're going to be talking about an aspect of parenting. And some of you are kids and you're going to be like, oh, I don't have to listen to this. But there is a message for you kids today because parenting involves you because we're parents because of you, right? And then some of you are in a different season of life and you're like, oh, my kids are grown. But your parenting does not end when your kids leave the house. You're always a parent and you're always an influence, whether it be good or bad. And then some of you don't have kids, and to you, I say, we are a part of the church, and we need to be praying for each other. We need to be helping, supporting, encouraging all of our parents, because children are the next generation of the church, and we cannot take this lightly. And so we have been going through this series of addressing the elephants in the family room, and we've been looking at some tough issues. We've been doing so by looking at the family of King David. Very dysfunctional family. A man after God's own heart, but has made lots of mistakes, especially with his family. And today we're going to continue to look at some of the mistakes that David made as a father. And where we arrive in the life of David's family is his oldest son did a horrible thing, did a horrible thing and had assaulted his half-sister. And then another David's son, Absalom, as we saw last week, became angry and let his anger get to the sinful state of hate and then ended up having his half-brother murdered. And so we look at all these things that happen and the question is, is what was David's response? David is not only king, but he's dad. So how did he respond? And let me say that his response was weak. His response was a passive or an absent response. Just to give you an example of that, when Amnon had, had committed a terrible assault on his sister, in 2 Samuel 13.21... It says this is the response. It, it says that when King David heard all of this, he was furious. Yeah, okay, you have every right to be furious. But he did nothing about it. Did nothing about it spiritually, legally, did nothing about it. 
Other translations, including the Greek version of this verse, includes the following. But he did not punish his son, Amnon, because he loved him, for he was his firstborn. He was his firstborn. So if you are the second, third, fourth, fifth kid, you're like, seriously? You know, you love the firstborn more than us? And this, what happened was, is he was a passive parent. He was like, oh, it's my firstborn boy. And he did nothing. And it allowed Absalom to be enraged. There was no spiritual covering. There was no spiritual response. But that wasn't the only time David responded in weak and passive parenting. Absalom ended up overthrowing his dad from the throne, took over the throne in a coup on the kingdom of Israel. But not only that, so did another son. When David was much older, Adonijah did the same thing. Weak dad overthrows him and takes over the throne for a period of time. And in 1 Kings 1.6, we see David's response, again, lack of a response, that says this. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom and was very handsome. Now, again, parenting is hard. It's not easy. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you've got young kids and you're like, oh, it's not too bad. Wait till they become teenagers. <laughs> right? Seriously. Seriously. Parenting is hard. And so all of us today need to ask the question, how are we honoring the Lord? How, if we are parents, how can we change and grow in God's design if as the church how can we support and kids how can you honor and be obedient and respect your parents but today we're talking specifically about this issue of passive parenting again that was David's big issue he did not respond when he needed to respond. He was not a spiritual leader to his family in ways that he should have been. And as a result, there were consequences for that. His kids struggled because as a parent, you either provide a stepping stone or a stumbling block. And unfortunately, David provided a stumbling block. But, but here's the thing. Even though we're talking about passive parenting, that is not an excuse for parents to be harsh or abusive. Or be a bully to their kids. Okay? So please know that that is not God's design. Actually, Apostle Paul addressed that in Ephesians 6, 4. He says, do not provoke your children to anger or resentment by the way you treat them. And he's talking about when you give them a burden because you're too harsh with them. And Paul says, don't do that because not only will they resent you, but they will resent God. And so parenting is tough again, right? And so we don't want to be too harsh for them to resent you and God, but we don't want to be passive, which is going to be our focus today, and not lead them spiritually. So let's go ahead and start looking at passive parenting in the context of, again, David's family. And I'd like to give you a definition. Now, I'm going to throw this out real quick. I think our culture, unfortunately... Has, is moving more towards encouraging passive parenting. As soon as, you, as soon as you take God out of schools, guess what? Authority is completely flipped upside down. And all of a sudden, the kids are given a false sense of authority and empowerment. Now, I'm not saying being harsh. I'm not saying being abusive. But as soon as you take out authority, as soon as you take out God-given structure of consequences, then you start a process of misrepresenting relationship, authority, boundaries, all these things. So let's look at this definition, which is going to help us be able to see God's design for parents. And with that, kids' response. Here's a definition of passive parenting. Passive parenting is the insufficiency of rules... Boundaries and structure. It is not from a short supply of love, but instead a misplacing of authority. Passive parents lack enforcement 
and follow through. This is an elephant that must be addressed in families. Now, I'm not saying that the parents are the elephant. So kids don't walk out calling your kids an elephant. No, but the absence or weak parenting becomes an elephant in the family that steals the place that God designs to fill. So let's start looking at this with this first point. This is on the back of your bulletins if you want to follow along. Also on the back you have the scriptures that I'm going to be looking at if you want to look at those ahead of time. To start first, passive parenting is the insufficiency of rules, boundaries, and structure. As soon as you take away or have weak rules, boundaries, or structure, you are not pointing the kids in the right direction, okay? There is a goal in parenting, if you didn't know that. The goal of parenting is not for, is not for you to be friends with your kids. Now, that happens when it's healthy. It happens when God is on the throne of that relationship. You do become friends, but that's not the goal. The goal is also not for your child to be a professional athlete. Sorry to burst bubbles. That's not the goal. The goal is not for them to be a millionaire or super successful. The goal, the target of parenting is to aim them, lead them towards God. That's the goal. Their relationship with him. But when you don't have boundaries, when you don't have structure, when you don't have order, then there is no direction. There's no direction. I'd like to use a couple passages of scripture. And to do so, I brought a visual. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 127, but also Proverbs 22. Some of you remember a couple years ago, I actually shot an arrow on stage at a target. And I even had two people standing on each side of the target and I didn't hit them. So I got this extra cushion in case I happened to let it loose. During, no, I, I wouldn't do that. But here's the thing. If we look at this, let's look at our first scripture. Psalms 127, 3 through 5. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. In verse 4, we see children are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. What is the purpose of an arrow? It's not just to sit there. It's not to be put above the mantle. No, it is to be sent out. So for those of you, the few of you that think, oh, I'm going to keep my kids with me forever. No, they need to be sent out. There's a purpose. They are to leave and go forth seeking God beyond you, right? The other thing is they need to have a target, where are we sending them out? You do not take an arrow and shoot it in the air, do you? No. You aim it at a target. And that's where we see in Proverbs 22, 6, specifically what the target is. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. That word train is a Hebrew word that means start in the right direction. Ever since a child is little, the parent's responsibility is to have structure, to have boundaries, to have rules, to point the kids in the right direction. That word also means a narrowing. So that means you don't have multiple targets for your kids. You have one target. It is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Everything else must come through that. Right? So... Also what we see here is when Solomon was saying these words, the Jewish people knew what he was saying because to say the way they should go, so train means point them in the right direction. The way they should go actually means in dedication to God. It was clear to them when he said train them in the way they should go. He's like aim them towards God. Everything in their life needs to be towards God, for God. And this is what it meant. Parents are to point their children with narrowing direction towards God in a dedicated or committed life to God. God is the target. Parents have rules and boundaries and structure for the primary purpose in all things to aim their kids, send them out, point them only one target, and it is towards God. 
the absence of structure, boundaries and rules creates multiple choices. And not only that, no clear direction. We need to be faithful. And as a church, we need to come alongside parents and be able to point them to God in all things. There's no boundaries. There's no target. If there's no rules, there's no target. There's no structure. There's no target. I read recently in Parenting Magazine that says that when a child lacks age-appropriate boundaries, rules, and structure, it's like trying to raise a goldfish outside its fishbowl. The truth is, when we don't have boundaries and structure and rules, we are creating harm for them. We are creating harm for them. Think about that. Again, a fish outside of a fishbowl is not going to survive. It doesn't have that structure that keeps them safe and meets their every need. A fishbowl is best for a fish, and an arrow is best with a target, and a child is best with a structure and boundaries that point to God. The second thing, the second thing that we see that when, a, when passive parenting is when passive parenting is misplacing of the authority. Passive parenting is the misplacing of authority. Now it's important, kids, to understand that your parents as the authority over you is not just something that your parents all got together and said, yeah, let's be in charge and make their lives miserable. No, it's actually God who called your parents to be authority in your life. It's God. This is revealed, Paul reveals this in Romans 13, 1 through 2. Everyone must submit himself to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against this authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on them. Selves. When parents are passive, they are not fulfilling their God-given place as authority over their kids. Parents are to lead their kids ultimately because when parents are the authority, then they are training their children towards being under God's authority. Because when a kid grows up thinking no one is over me, That doesn't just affect the relationship with the parent and kid. It affects the relationship of the kid and every single authority. And ultimately, it affects the relationship with God. Do you see how that works? And believe me, it's hard. You kids wear us out. You give us headaches. You know, I mean, it's hard being a parent. We love you. You're awesome. But sometimes it's hard. And it's a lot easier just to give in. But we have to realize the ripple effect that takes place. And here, kids, here's, here's your moment. I love you, but let me give you some te- teaching here. The Apostle Paul in Colossians 3.20 instructs this. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Children, obey your parents as the authority Ultimately, because God established them as your authority. And secondly, because this pleases God. You're serving God by obeying your parents. Ephesians 6.1, Paul goes on and says again, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It doesn't say, children, obey your parents if you think they're right. No. Obey them because this is right. And here's the deal. Unless a parent is being abusive or unbiblical, you don't need to determine if their actions are right or wrong. It's your responsibility to obey. Period. You're submitting to that authority. You're trusting that authority. It's not your place to question it or sass or what I learned recently, you know, it used to be that boom, boom, boom. Well, now it's a seatbelt, right? 
or a car seat. Right? Right? Don't do that, kids. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. Because, again, notice the phrase, in the Lord. Children, obey your parents. In the Lord. You're ultimately obeying God. You're ultimately obeying God. God, this is what God wants for you. This is what is going to allow you to be able to grow in a fishbowl that will meet your every need. Now, you might, you'll eventually go out and find a new fishbowl, right? But you have to be faithful and obedient to those that God has called you to. But then Paul goes on. I love this next part in verses 2 through 3 because it's not just about obedience. It's also about honor. And honor means to Lift them up in your eyes to a place of value. And this is what he says. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Here's the thing. Our sinful nature is is going to rebel against authority. That's our sinful nature. And if a parent does not walk in that place of God-given authority, their kids are going to fight for control. It's just our sinful nature. So this involves kids. Honor your parents. See them as a God-given value in your life. Obey them because of their position. You don't determine if they deserve it or not. They're your parents. But parents, you better establish God as the head of your home and then you next because your kids will Fight for control if you don't establish that authority. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Come on. And our culture is going the wrong direction. It's time for the church to stand up. And again, don't be abusive. But lead spiritually. Have consequences. And do it all in love. And never Discipline out of anger as we talked about next week and always seek the Lord in all these things. Because when we establish that authority, when we lead them well and God is the target, the, res- the result is the promise that it may go well with our children and that they will enjoy a long life on earth. When we don't make God the head of our home and we don't lead them with our God-given authority and point them to God, then the result is we are robbing them of that relationship and authority that God longs to have as their heavenly father, right? Now, quickly to look at David, we look at David and we're like, oh, so this must just be a message if you have young kids at home. Wrong, okay? David. How old do you think David was when Amnon did that horrible act? How old do you think David was? Guess. 45? Good guess. Most scholars say he was 50. 50 years old. So that means we need to point our adult children to God in all things. We need to establish God as the head and we still are a spiritual authority and influence of our kids even when they are adults and we are in our 50s or older. Now when Absalom had overthrown his dad and had taken over the throne, his dad was 62 years old. And Adonijah was even older than that. The bottom line is, is as long as you have breath, You are leading your kids under God's authority, pointing them to God, and creating the boundaries and the order so that it is God that they honor in all things. Here's the third thing. Third thing. Trying to move through this quickly. Last thing we see in passive parenting. Passive parenting lacks enforcement and follow through. Enforcement and follow through. Passive parenting we see is when they do not uphold expectations and consequences. I see this a lot. I'll be honest, there's times that I've gotten weak and I'm like, fine, yes, I said that you couldn't have your tablet until Friday, but oh, you're making me crazy. Go ahead, right? But we have to understand what we're doing. But I see that. There I am in the grocery store and I hear this kid screaming, ah, you know, all this kind of stuff. And you hear the parent and they're like, hey, if you stop, I'll get you a sucker. 
right? If you stop. And I'm totally listening. I'm like, oh, I know how this is going to play out, right? The rest of the store, the kid's still going nuts. And then I see him out in the parking lot, and the kid's got this smirk of victory with a sucker in their mouth. Parents, that's passive parenting. Who won? Kid. Ultimately, again, it's establishing that there are consequences for your actions. There's expectations that need to be fulfilled. But if we don't hold them to that, the kids will not learn ultimately how to be able to live in a way that honors the Lord and to live with an integrity. Because parenting is building character, people. It's building character. We want to lead them towards the character of Jesus Christ so that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. But if we don't establish authority, if we don't follow through and have follow through on expectations and consequences, we are just leaving them completely without any sense of who God is or what it means to live and honor Him. There's a scripture that always convicts me when I read it. And this is important. And James 5.12 says, But let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. And if we say, this is the expectation. Now there's sometimes you have to change it. But pray about it and seek the Lord and be consistent. But as much as we can, we need to be consistent and make our yes be yes and our no be no. Because if we don't, ultimately... We are telling our kids, you can't trust what I say. When we say, this is going to happen if you do this, and then it doesn't happen. We're telling our kids, you can't trust what I'm saying. And that compromises our relationship with them, and it compromises their relationship with the Lord. Parenting's hard. It is not for the weak of heart or the weak of faith. God has called you. He will equip you. But you must be faithful to point them, lead them. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because ultimately, the words you speak are going to be the words that confirm God is real. He loves you. He has a plan for you. He died for you. And life is only found in him alone. Life is only found in him alone. I'd like to go ahead and just close with this. Parent, passive parenting is not anybody's intention. They don't wake up and say, oh, I'm going to be a passive parent. I'm going to be a weak parent. That's my goal. That doesn't happen, does it? The reality is, in the world today, there's a lot of people who are single parents for multiple reasons. And it's hard when you're doing it alone. What we're going to talk about next week is when a family is spiritually divided. And you've only got one parent that is fighting to follow God's way. And the other is checked out for lunch. It's hard, okay? But we have the church. We are not to do it alone. If you're struggling with this, I don't want this message to beat you up or make you feel bad, okay? It's not the goal. It's for you to be convicted by the Holy Spirit to say, I need to lead them to God. I need to parent in a way that in all things I am equipping them to have the character of Christ and to follow Christ. Okay? So maybe it's you being able to say, God changed this about me. And if you're a young person and you are struggling and you're taking it out on your parents and you are fighting them Every inch of your relationship, I'm telling you, you're robbing yourself. And you're robbing your parents. And maybe you have adult kids that you're letting disrespect you. Seek the Lord about it. Seek the Lord about it. Jesus is the healer, amen? Jesus is the healer of families, amen? And we need to invite Jesus into the rightful place and to bring order back in our families, to bring victory in our families, for him to be the head of our families so that our families can actually produce a harvest for the kingdom of God. Because if we seek the Lord and if we follow him, 
They will not stray from it. Now, they might stray from, for, from it for a while. Some of you have kids that have been straying for, from the Lord for a long time. And I'm not saying it's your fault, okay? But don't give up on them. Because God never gives up on us. God never gives up on us. Let's continue to seek the Lord and lift our family up to him and take our rightful place, which is ultimately allowing God to be the authority, the head, the healer, the victory, all for his glory, because he is faithful. Let's stand, have a time of invitation. If you are outside of Christ, if you're trying to parent outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't do it anymore. Give your life to Jesus Christ. If you are outside of Christ and have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, don't wait any longer. Or if you just need prayer, we love to Lee would love to pray for you today. Paul would love to pray for you today. Let us pray for you today if you're struggling in any area. If you have any decision where you're at, just to respond and say, I choose you. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord.